Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. We're back with an in-game analysis of the Champions League group stage match between Dortmund and Barcelona. The match ended 0-0 in a tactical battle between Valverde and Favre, although Favre will be the more disappointed with his team ending with over 3 expected goals to Barcelona's 0.38. But let's take a look at the tactics which led to this. Just before we get into that though, if you're new around here, I'd appreciate it if you liked, commented and subscribed. If you want to see more match reviews, player and manager profiles and so much more, drop video suggestions below or tweet at Football Made Simple. Now, let's get into it. We'll be using a few statistics when analysing this match and a good app to keep up with your team as well as look at stats is OneFootball, which is today's video sponsor. So go ahead and download it through the link in the description. Just a quick reminder of the formations. Dortmund lined up in a 4-2-3-1 consisting of the following. In response, Barca used a classic 4-3-3 consisting of the following. Now, let's take a look at the tactics, starting with what Barca did on the ball as they had more position. Barcelona as always looked to play out from the back. This included extensive use of the centre-backs on the ball. During this phase, Dortmund usually defended in a 4-4-2 medium block. Although, at certain times they chose to press higher up, through Royce and Alcacer closing off the centre-backs and one of the wingers ready to spring on the full-back. However, Dortmund didn't commit many numbers to the press in order to maintain their solidity, so they depended on their cover press instead. But the majority of the time, Barcelona did manage to play through the press. Dortmund's main tactic was not to press though, and they usually stayed in a 4-4-2 mid-block. Interestingly, initially, Busquets did not drop between the centre-backs, but instead stayed high up and often one of the full-backs would tuck in instead to make a back three or they built up with just the centre-backs and in two. This could be because Dortmund didn't press high, so the extra highly technical midfielder wasn't needed to outnumber the forwards, as they effectively had a 2 vs 0, so instead, Royce and Alcacer would try to shield the ball into midfield. Later on in the match, Busquets did drop into the backline during the build-up to try and draw one of Paco or Royce into a press and break their organisation, but the forwards were disciplined and would maintain their position. However, as Barca had three central midfielders against Dortmund's two, they could create an extra option and get the ball into midfield. Often, this meant Arta and De Jong would alternate in pushing high whilst the other tucked in alongside Busquets in a double pivot. In this phase, Dortmund became more of a 4-4-1-1 as Royce tried to shut down Busquets. Another major ploy for Barca to get into attacking positions was to get between the lines. By using a double pivot, they hoped to attract Dortmund's midfield and grow the gap between the lines. Barca would look to populate this zone. When Semedo went wide on the overlap, Fatty drifted into this half space to look to receive a pass in this zone and then attempt to link with the forwards. Or, if Fatty stayed wide, Griezmann was comfortable drifting across the pitch to get into this zone instead. The idea was to create a central overload, as Dortmund only had two true central midfielders. Once the centre was overloaded, Alba could drift into good positions high up on the left. However, for this to have been more effective, Barca would have needed quicker passing, as Dortmund will kick to drop into a deep 4-4-2 block when under sustained pressure. However, Barca often took too many touches to make this happen. This resulted in only one shot on target throughout the match. Even when Messi came on, the tactics were largely the same. However, he attracted more defenders centrally, opening up space on the wings, so Semedo especially got into great positions in the second half on the left. This also played into Dortmund's game plan. They trusted the pace of their front four in Sancho, Azard, Royce and Alcacer. The most common ploy was to attack the spaces vacated by the fullbacks. This could be achieved either through long passes into these zones directly for Parker and Royce to run into, but they also used a third man run well meaning Paco would drop off, receive the ball and lay it off to Royce, which drew the centre-backs forwards, whilst the third man made the run off the ball, looking for the penetrating pass. But when Dortmund did have the ball deep, 
Witzel dropped between the center backs, with the full backs pushing high. Witzel was exemplary in the build-up and in keeping possession, with only PK having higher than his 95% pass accuracy. Bosses' pressing was also patchy, meaning they often dropped into a deep block, usually a 4-5-1 with Griezmann and Fatih dropping. This meant Suarez was often isolated when they tried to counter-attack. Dortmund also aimed to use side overloads to free their wingers, who were fluid and switched sides regularly. We'll focus on the right as that's where they had most of their success. Favre wanted to isolate Sancho against Semedo, who was playing on his wrong side in the second half. They did this expertly by overloading one side with Royce and Hazard, and Sancho moved slightly central. Hakimi would then advance high up the pitch, so when they shifted the ball, he and Sancho could combine. This would often mean Hakimi receiving the ball and Sancho, or even a midfielder, attacking the half space after Semedo tried to close them down. And from here, they could then look for the low cross. Royce got on the end of several good chances in this manner. And this is also what led to the penalty. An overload on the left hand side was closely followed by a quick passing switch which left Sancho 1 vs 1 against Semedo. Although Dortmund didn't win, they had the better of the play, and if you want to know more about how Favre transformed Dortmund, check out the video in the cards now. What other tactics did you notice today? Drop them down in the comments below. For this Champions League match day, I've partnered up with Newman, who will analyse the Liverpool and Napoli match, so if you want to have a look at that, go over to his channel and check it out now, and it will be linked below as well. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.